We're glad you've joined us today for our worship service. It's always a blessing to have you with us. We live in a world where hope is often scarce and trials seem to come regularly anymore. It's hard to find peace in this world. Today our scripture is from the Gospel of John, the fourth chapter, verses five through 42, where Jesus talks to a woman and brings hope and brings the answer. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of the ground of Jacob given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there and Jesus was tired by his journey and was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the city to buy food. Then the Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that's saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well and his sons and the flocks who drank from it? Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I give will never be thirsty. The water I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you're right in saying I have no husband for you've had five husbands and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true, the woman said to him. Sir, I see that you are a prophet our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you say that the place where we worship must be in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do, do not know, but we worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and it is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such to those who worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything that I have ever done. He could, could he be the Messiah? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and complete his work. Do you not say four months more and then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around and you see the fields are already white for harvest. The reaper is already receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here is the saying that holds true, one sows, another reaps. I send you to reap that which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay there, and he stayed there two days, and said to
to the woman. It is no longer because of you that we believe. We have heard it for ourselves, and we know that he is truly the Savior of the world. May God add his blessing to his holy word. Jesus arrived in Sakaar from a long morning of walking. It was a hot day, and he was tired. Jesus had submitted himself to the same limitations that you and I do. Even though he was God, he was truly man. And the heat and the long walk had worn him out. He sat down by the well of Jacob at a place that Jacob had returned to when he came from his father-in-law Laban, where he brought his wives and his children. And it was there that his bones were buried when they were returned from Egypt. The disciples had gone into the city to get food. And they, Jesus sat there and waited them to return. He longed for a cool drink of water. And a Samaritan woman came at about noon to draw water from the well. Most of the woman would have, women would have come in earlier in the day. It would have not been nearly as hot and they found safety in numbers. But this woman was criticized by them by the way that she lived her life. And she decided that she would rather fight the heat of the day than to hear their criticism and their disapproval. The Scottish preacher Alexander McLaren said, all in all, this woman was a fascinating character. She is of mature age. She has not an altogether reputable past. She is frivolous, ready to talk to strangers, and with a tongue quick to turn grave things into jest. Yet she possesses hidden beneath the masses of unclean vanities, a conscience and a yearning for something that is better than what she has. She was shocked when Jesus asked her for a drink of water. Jewish law forbids a rabbi to speak to a woman in public even if that woman might be his wife or his sister. But Jesus never got caught up in foolish laws. If Jesus gave a law, it was worthwhile. It was for our good, something we should hear, something that mattered. If this woman expected to hear anything from Jesus, it would have been a derogatory comment about her being a Samaritan. And then he would probably have frowned and got up and left. Yet Jesus showed no signs of bigotry towards this woman. And even though he had the power of God, he asked her for a drink of water. She though questioned him and asked, how is it that you being a Jew, ask from me, a Samaritan woman, a drink of water? You have nothing to draw with, and this well is deep. Where do you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? who gave it to us. I believe that the church today needs to hear Jesus' response to her. He didn't give to her a dissertation on racial justice. He said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked and he would have given you the living water. Jesus didn't allow her to change the subject. He didn't get distracted in what he wanted to tell her. He kept the main thing, the main thing. The church today wants to be involved in a lot of social issues. And that's okay because we need to set the way. But there is nothing we do as Christians, nothing that is more important than leading people to Jesus Christ. If we do that, the other things will be worked out in their lives by the people who come to know Jesus. He will make the change. It will come naturally if you love him. Jesus told her that everyone who drinks from the water she had would thirst again. But whoever drinks from the water that I give will never be thirsty. She wasn't sure what he was talking about, but she liked the sound of it. She said, sir, give me that water. Her response, it was logical, but it wasn't spiritual. 
She thought she might get out of that hard job of carrying a jar of heavy water back and forth every day. And she thought she would get out of the inconvenience of having the other women in the city criticize her and talk about her. But Jesus said to her, go get your husband and come back. For a rabbi to tell a woman to go get her husband really stretched the boundaries of that culture, both of the Jewish people and Samaritans. It would have been considered wrong to do this. But she told Jesus, I have no husband. And Jesus simply said to her, no, you don't. But you've had five husbands. And the man that you live with now, he is not your husband. She clicked with her at that point. This man had to be a prophet. She was embarrassed, though nothing in the way he said what he said to her and his demeanor was harsh or condescending to her. This conversation was so unexpected for her. It was like Jesus was looking directly into her soul. He knew the mistakes that she had made, the bad choices that she had made. He could sense the hurt that filled her life, the emptiness that was there. He knew that she'd like to live her life over again differently, but she didn't know where to start. She longed for a hope that could be different, but she didn't know where to find that hope. Her life was passing by and nothing was changing. And she didn't know how to stop the terrible cycle that she was on or how to break the chain of mistakes that she had made. She would love a new life, but she didn't know where to begin to find one. Let me tell you, there is a world beyond these walls of people who are just like her. People ashamed of their past, not proud of the present that they live in, but don't know how to make a change. They long for a different way. They long for the hope of Jesus that we have, but they don't know where to find it. They don't know how to give up their sins and seek forgiveness. And Satan continues to tell them that they've gone too far and that God won't forgive what they've done. And they believe the lie that he tells. We have the answer. And it wasn't given to us to keep to ourselves. We need to tell the world that God loves them, that God cares about them, and he wants to lead them to Jesus so that they can find peace. I don't know if this woman felt convicted or unsure of what Jesus was talking about, but she tried to change the subject and Jesus would have none of that. Without condemning her, he continued to give her the promise of living water. Jesus was speaking to her soul, a soul that felt like it was dehydrated and parched from a life that had been disappointing to her. She felt inside of her heart a promise that life could be different, like a fountain of water that would refresh her and would be a spring of living water that she could share with others. The more he spoke to her, the more she felt something welling up inside of her. She could sense this offer of a new, better life was real. It was true. She knew that the man she was talking to was different. He was special. He was God. She wanted this living water in her life and she wanted to share it with her neighbors and her friends. And for the first time in her life, she felt hope. The woman knew about the coming of the Messiah and she told Jesus that when he comes, he will explain everything to us. And Jesus said to her directly, I am the Messiah, the one she had heard of, the one that the world longed for was standing right in front of her. Jesus confirmed to her who he was. He left no doubt. He leaves no doubt for us. He is the Son of God who came to save the world. The things that she felt in her heart were real. They were true. The disciples then came back 
And John said they were surprised to find Jesus talking to this woman. As they went into town to get their food, they may have passed her along the way. They would not have stepped out of her way. They probably even snorted or made some comment about this Samaritan woman. If anything, they would have looked down upon her. And yet Jesus, looking at her in the midst of a life that she was not proud of, saw her and saw her soul as precious to him. That's the way Jesus sees us, as precious. He sees you as one of great value, one for whom he was willing to go to the cross and to die for. He looks at you and sees great purpose in your life, one that he has called to help build his kingdom, to do his work in this world. He knows our faults and he forgives our sins and he's cast them from us as far as the east is from the west. We carry them no longer. And he brings hope into our life and he offers us the water that will bring us to a life that is blessed and fulfilled by him. He gives you the assurance that you belong to him and that he has named his name upon you. This woman of whom Jesus spoke to left her water jar there and she went back to the city and she told everyone that she met that there was a prophet at the well who had told her everything that she had ever done. Come and see him, for this might be the Messiah. They put down what they were doing and they came and they listened to Jesus and they asked him to stay. And John tells us that Jesus spent an extra two days there. This woman who the village had looked down upon, who had ostracized her, became the greatest evangelist that that village had ever seen. She brought people to Jesus. And that's what we're called to do too. To bring people to Jesus and the hope and the joy and the peace that he brings. We live in a world that doesn't know a lot about God. Like the woman at the well, they've heard a little about him, but they pay very little attention to him. They live their life without him in their mind. For many, he's not high on their list of priorities, if at all. Some turn to him when trouble comes. Some will ask him to bless them if they have a need. Some have had faith and have followed, but have turned from that faith and look to the things of the world to satisfy them and to meet their needs. And the world will, but only for a short time, only for a little while. Some understand that he is the one who created the world and they admire that. Some recognize the wisdom of his word and they're smart enough to try and learn from that. Some want to hear his teaching. Some recognize his strength and they'll look to him to sustain them in times when they become difficult. And he has done all this for you and it is desires to bless you. But only when you realize that he has saved you will you worship him. That he has paid your price. That he has given you eternal life. And it belongs to you because you have believed on what he did. He will give you purpose. He will give you hope. When the world is tough and you question what's going to happen if it's not even downright frightening to you, we can turn to him. He will bring light into your life. He will give you great joy and great peace if you open your heart to him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ with the world. Lord, we can easily get discouraged. We look around us and see things and they are so terrible and so difficult. 
but yet we are not without hope. We are, Lord, your people. And Lord, you tell us to come and trust you, for you will give us peace and you will be with us forever. May we accept that offer, O oh Lord, and trust you. This we pray. Amen. <laughs>